with the most surprising thing that's happened to me this past year is writing a children's book for sure. Just this weekend, I was asked that question. Did you ever imagine yourself writing children's books? And I said, no, absolutely not. I never imagined myself doing that. So I would definitely say um, working on this project was the most surprising and wonderful uh, thing of this last year. Yeah, it's been wonderful to, to work on. I'm excited to get into all of that and talk about that. And then you've got a bigger mission in play as well about reintroducing uh, religious sisters back into just, well, the public consciousness really, isn't it? All right, let's get into all of that. Welcome, everybody. It's good to have you with us. This is Smart Catholics Mastermind. We are joined by Mother Claire. She's of the community of the Francis Franciscans of the Renewal. Welcome, Mother. It's good to have you with us. Thank you so much. So glad to be here. So briefly, Smart Catholics Mastermind, it is all about meeting the minds and hearts of Catholic creators. They are devoting their time and their talent to mastering their journey and vocation so that normal people like you and I can live fuller lives faster, maybe get a little smarter. Mother, before talking about your book and your mission, uh, I'd love to hear your story and perhaps how you discern the religious life. Could you take us there? Oh, sure. We might need a few more hours than your show will allow, but I'll try to encapsulate it. Um, I did not grow up knowing sisters, although I was uh, blessed to be in a very devout Catholic family. I did not go to Catholic schools, was raised on military bases exclusively if my father was in the service. And it wasn't until I went to Franciscan University in Steubenville that I encountered the religious life. And that threw me into a serious in interior quandary, could it be that I'm called to that? And I, my sincere interior hope was that I was not, in fact, called to that. And so that from, from that conflict grew a, a real uh, discernment process that was very long and involved and dramatic in every way, uh, which finally resulted in God's victory. And I have to say my victory too, because discovering God's will is always a, a victory and a joy, and it brings peace and happiness beyond anything we can hope for or imagine. And so the victory came when I surrendered to the wonderful will of God and, and, and wound up in the convent, <laughs> much to my, to my surprise. And that's, that's the encapsulation of, of a long dramatic journey, um, which is all captured in not the children's book about which we'll be speaking, but a different book called Discerning Religious Life, which the hope of that work is to make it easier on other people, <laughs> because I, I do hold uh, that discernment should not be that hard. It should not be yeah. that hard. And there are ways to make it easier um, and more graceful, more simple, um, and, and more of a, a beautiful response to God's will. So hopefully that book can help people uh, with that process. But my own process was laborious, and um, but I, I have the joy of now experience just the pure joy of, of being in the will of God. That's beautiful. Is So this larger mission that you're working on and this little, the children's book that you've crafted here, is that hearkening back to this message you've just shared of making discernment easier and not so painful? Absolutely, it does. It, it, it's, it's like for me, I sometimes use the analogy that it's the, the voyagers that got lost that make the maps. You know, it, it's, you know, you, you find a continent you never meant to find and you never found India, which you meant to get to. And you're the one that ends up drawing the map because you're the guy that got lost. And mm -hmm. and I feel like in some ways that's my mission. I, I was so lost, in a sense, in the discernment journey and so confused and conflicted um, and sort of wandering in circles. And mm -hmm. then again, having the joy of finding my vocation in the convent, realizing, wow, it doesn't have to be that hard. That has motivated me. Uh, for, for, for many, many years now to help others. To, and so for sure, this children's book project does harken back to that revelation that, wow, if I can help make it easier for someone else, I certainly do want to do that, um, to expose the beauty of religious life, the joy of religious life, to help dispel some of the fears that are what makes the journey of discernment so agonizing. Um, mm -hmm. These fears become ominous and much bigger than they need to be. And so all of these are elements that motivate me uh, to really want to help the young Catholic person in their own journey, whether it leads to religious life or not. Mm -hmm. uh, the discernment journey, I want to help with that, whether it leads to religious life or not, because the point is to help people to get to the will of God, which is always the best. Yeah. Could we take a moment and actually circle that? Um, why is it so hard? 
and perhaps in in your life but then as you're being a, a mother to your your own community and seeing others discerning as well in their struggles like have you seen a couple of like key things that are really and i imagine that's your book there right isn't it key yes, things yes, contributing yes. to why it's so difficult today to the, the, the yeah sure absolutely well one of them is is kind of leads right to the nature of the children's book that we're talking about the unsolvable problem little convent in the big city part of it is it's very very hard to discern something that you don't see that mm. you don't know that okay. you don't experience and you know, and these days, I would say so many, if not the majority of our Catholic children do not see religious life. And so they don't really know that this world, this wonderful world of, of total surrender to God, this total following of Jesus Christ in the most radical of ways even exists. They do mm -hmm. not know in many, 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 many cases that this even exists. So yes, how do you embark upon a journey of discernment? We are not even clear about the thing itself, you know, impossible, impossible. First, you have to know that the thing is there and that you could be being called to it. But other things that make discernment difficult, of course, are the, are the same things that make the Christian life difficult, which is the breakdown of the family, which is the general, you know, the toxicity of the culture um, that we live in this beautiful, wonderful world that God loves so much. We have to admit it's, it's, it's got some toxic elements in it. And, and those mm -hmm. elements um, can make it very, very hard for the young person to be free enough mm -hmm. to discern, to be free enough to discern. But that's a whole, that could be a whole show in itself. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's beautiful. Well, let's talk about the book then. So um, Little Convent in the Big City, I think is the, the name of the show or the, the series of yes. stories. And it's based on a true story too, isn't it? It certainly is. It certainly is. So this is, this is so exciting. And um, Little Convent in the Big City, and I've is got a, a copy for those who are. Oh, I'm looking. so glad you have it there with you. <laughs> there yes. So yeah, there's little convent in the big city. You can see the cute little little convent there. Yes. Character. Sister Mary Andy, there she is in all her mm -hmm. all her beauty. Um, so the idea is that you know our life, we are sort of nestled into the inner city of the Bronx and East Harlem, where I live, and the inner cities of other cities, Atlantic City, um, and other places. And our, our quaint little convents and our beautiful um, sacramental religious life is nestled in to places that are um, very much in need of the light of Christ and mm -hmm. very much in need of the love, the love of Christ. And, um, mm -hmm. and so it just, it, that's where the idea of the little convent in the big city that contrasts this little um, oasis in the midst of the world and within that to reveal for children the beauty of the life of the sister and all that entails. So it has to be a series because you cannot capture in one children's book a uh, kind of the beauty um, and the joy and, and kind of the, uh, the life, the life, the aspects of the life. And so going back to that idea that I think many, if not most Catholic children uh, don't know of religious life anymore. And even many, many adults have even asked me, you know, Oh, has that, I haven't seen a, a sister in so many years. I thought that went out with the second Vatican council. You know, the, the real question of, is this a thing anymore? And oh, how we have to proclaim to on the rooftops that yes, this is, this is a thing. Jesus mm -hmm. is still calling. He is still calling. And, uh, and, that, and that's important. Um, but so to thought we can't get into every Catholic home. We sisters, there are so few of us. We can't get into every Catholic home and not even to every Catholic school. And how many parents lament the fact that their children are no longer taught by sisters, as wonderful as our lay teachers are. And we are so grateful for the fervor and the devotion of the laity rising up. And this is, we thank God for that. And we still need that. But at the same time, so many um, Catholic parents do lament and remember the days when um, uh, the family was exposed more to the religious life. And since that's not the case, that what if we could create a character and a scenario and even a series that could be, um, that could go where we can't go. That Sister Mary Andy and the little convent in the big city can get into every Catholic school and every homeschooling program and maybe even every Catholic home and therefore introduce our Catholic children to this wonderful world of religious life. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That's, well, you're right. The books can reach a lot more. What's the, can you outline the story um, sure. that the story actually goes through? 
Sure. So the title is The Unsolvable Problem, a little provocative. What could be the unsolvable problem? And poor Sister Mary Andy wakes up one day distressed because the next day is the 4th of July, Independence Day. And she and her sisters are going to be hosting a barbecue for their, their poor neighbors, the homeless, uh, the hungry. And they want to make it so special. Um, hamburgers and root beer floats and make a special meal. Now, this is this is a direct reflection of our, our life. We have a soup kitchen and we bring meals out to the homeless and we always try to make things very, very special and festive for them and to make them feel and know, in fact, know, not just feel, but know that they're loved and cared mm -hmm. for, they're seen um, and God is providing for them uh, through, through us. And so in the story, which is based on a true story, we have all the ingredients for our festive uh, celebration of Independence Day, and yet there are no hamburger buns. And you just know you can't use two slices of bread for a hamburger and call it a party. You got to have yeah. a hamburger bun right. with some nice sesame seeds on top. So Sister Mary Andy's in distress. You know, we have everything we need, but we don't have the hamburger buns. Now, what is not explicitly um, told in the story, but you have to read through the lines, is that we live by divine providence. So you might just wonder, well, why doesn't Sister Mary Andy go to the grocery store and buy the hamburger buns that she needs? But we live totally by divine providence and we um, we trust in God to provide for us. And so you see Sister Mary Andy going straight to the Lord, uh, straight to the chapel to pray. So children reading this then are exposed to not only the convent and the sisters, but this direct connection um, to God's availability, God's love. Mm -hmm. God's providence, God's listening ear always, uh, you know, always moved toward us. And so she runs to the chapel. She lays her problem out before God. And lo and behold, the doorbell rings. Two men come. And what do they bring unexpectedly but um, all the hamburger buns they could ever need for the party? And the and so it ensues. And the, and the book ends. I uh, hope it's not a, uh, you know, a um, spoiler alert here. Uh, well, it's, these are the grownups listening. You know, the kids yeah, will get to read yeah. a lot later. Okay, so that uh, there is no unsolvable problem with God. And so then children reading the story can kind of hopefully begin to even apply that to their own, you know, young lives that, wow, you know, whatever I, I my little problems are, God cares about them. And, mm -hmm. and with him, there really is no unsolvable problem. So it's, it's, it's faith and it's hope and it's the love of God and it's the familiarity of God kind of wrapped up in this delightful little story, which is a very uh, exactly true story, which, which was, happened in our I comment. was going to ask, what was the inspiration for it? it? It was this, this actual event happened. We, we um, living by divine providence and wanting to serve the poor. And we literally didn't have hamburger buns. And this, it, it happened exactly as it's portrayed in the book, the doorbell rings the men come with with hamburger buns. Sister Mary Andy's prayers are answered, and uh, and so the and the um, and the poor are served uh, uh, beautifully through that. And 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 you know there are for that one story there are a hundred other stories of of God's providence mm -hmm. just being manifested in our lives and how He does care it, it for us through good people, you know, through mm -hmm. good people and through people who care about our mission and care about the poor. Also, and also sometimes in truly miraculous ways, in ways that can, are unexplainable, um, not just through the kindness of individuals, which is which is a beautiful thing and a wonderful way also, but sometimes downright miracles that happen. In this case, it was two good men who came by and, and, and uh, helped us out, but. It's beautiful. And I think this is meant to be a series. So you're uh, working towards or considering other follow-up stories, is that? Yes, yes. So that's the um, that's the exciting prospect of this. That you know, once you meet Sister Mary Andy, it's a relationship that can go on for the rest of your childhood because wow. there'll be more adventures and more stories to come. And we're hoping that even by next May will be the second installment of a uh, oh, cool. little convent in the big city. So more adventures to come. Well, that's wonderful. I think that there are um, the book is available for purchase now, and I think it's even on Amazon. Um, but there's also a special thing that that's happening, isn't it? Where people can buy the book in bulk uh, and sponsor yes. a classroom. Can you speak to that? Yes, thank you for bringing that up, Dominic. This is what I'm really, really excited about. And, um, you know, because it really is a mission. It's a bigger, it's bigger than a book. It's bigger than a project. It's bigger than a little dream. It's, it is a mission to expose our Catholic children to religious life. And, mm -hmm. and in order to do that, you know, we set up a program that 
there are passionate people, probably even passionate people listening to your program that believe in this and, and, and want our children to, to know about this beautiful possibility and want to introduce them to religious life. And a very simple and easy way to do that is to go to littleconvent.com and sponsor a classroom. And just, you just so easy, just click sponsor a classroom. And then you can choose a second grade class, either in your own state or your own school in your own neighborhood, or you could just say any classroom and then books will be sent to those that those that second grade class and they'll be able to bring that home uh, not only for their own enjoyment but their parents and their siblings and and everyone can experience this this thing that that used to be so common in, in the church but is has grown less common and they can have the joy of meeting sister Mary Andy and and uh, and meeting the sisters yeah I think that um when I last checked they'd completely sold out of the hardbacks they were so popular and so now there's um, I think the ordering more maybe, or any of those soft covers there too. Um, so touching on the larger mission, um, as we start to round out our conversation, um, what's the dream that, that you'd like to see? I and mean, obviously the book is, it's a first step. It's helping people to, to visualize, to see something that, you know, they might be called to. And so you're helping to sort of bridge that gap, um, down the line, what would you love to see come from all of this? Oh, what a great question. Oh, well, first of all, I'd love to see it really get truly into the hands of every seven-year-old Catholic child in the country. That's dream mm -hmm. number one, that Sister Mary Andy just gets disseminated to all the Catholic kids in the country from coast to coast. And that's gonna take good, generous people sponsoring classrooms. And then the bigger fruit, it's not just for those children to have a book in their hands, but it's to open up that world in their thinking that what is God's will for me? And what, and, and to begin to ask that question, like, and to make the connection that Jesus, as he's portrayed in the book as being this, being who he really is, available to us through the sacraments of the church, available for personal relationship, available um, to guide us through our life, that, that children will then be able to to say, I want to know and love and give my life to this Jesus in whatever way he calls me. And to know that that religious life is still a beautiful, joyous, wonderful possibility. And that that possibility becomes real in the hearts of those children as they grow up. And that some, da some year down the line, we get a call from a little child that says, you know, I, I got to know about religious life through Sister Mary Andy. And not just us, not just the Franciscans, but that the Dominicans get such calls and the Sisters of Mercy get such calls and mm -hmm. other religious get such calls where their children are, are now exposed to this beauty um, and can apply it most directly to, to their lives and, and for their family members as well. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, folk can visit, as you said already, Sister. You can go to littleconvent.com to check out this the project to have a look at the book sponsor a classroom um i have my my last question for you in just a second but hey wonderful viewer if you've uh, enjoyed this video and you've enjoyed meeting mother and hearing about this project please hit that like button it does help more people to hear about this message hear about this book uh this show is brought to you by the free catholic community on smartcatholics.com we are free of trolls and ads and toxicity faithful to the holy father pope francis and the church and we're committed to a culture of kindness and learning if that sounds like you then come and check us out at smartcatholics.com. Uh, sister, this is always my favorite part of every show. If you had one minute to share a message of maybe hope and encouragement or just a message from your heart to other Catholics everywhere, what would you say? I think the thing that we have to cling to most um, firmly uh, with, with all of our heart, mind, and soul is that we are infinitely loved. We are infinitely loved by a loving father and our father is good and he's, his will is good and his plans are good. And, you know, there's so much um, negativity and there's so much darkness and we can easily turn our focus to that. But rather than that, let's focus on that. Our, our father is good. And if we are close to him, clinging to him and clinging to his love, we will be a source of that goodness and that love in this dark, dark world. And so the love of God is real. It's personal, and we're meant to be spending it and lavishing it upon not only our children, but our neighbors and strangers and on the whole world. And, and that's what's going to, um, to make uh, the darkness much, much brighter.